Hi YouTube, this is Sharon J. Bainbridge here from Butterfly Lullaby and it's Sunday the 6th of August 2017. I'm just going to show you how I add Japanese knotweed to our drinking water. My partner and my daughter don't actually know, so I'm going to whisper here. Otherwise if they knew they wouldn't drink it, they said it's a funny taste. So at the moment they haven't noticed cause I'm, because I'm only adding a teaspoon of Japanese knotweed water to every bottle of water. I create. Uh, this is the sort of size, so it's roughly between 26 and 28 ounces of water, distilled water, not tap water. So I'll just give it a stir. I've actually sipped this. I usually keep the Japanese knotweed in the fridge. What I usually do is I usually collect some Japanese knotweed leaves and stems. I blend it up um, in the blender with some distilled water. Then I just put this into the fridge and I keep it for about three days and then start again. So I've sipped this one here that I've kept in a separate jar. I'm just going to add a teaspoon of water, give that a stir. Also give it a shake once it's in the bottle. I just tip it in to the bottle keep it in the fridge but I believe that because it's got transferential properties in the Japanese knotweed it must be very very good for you so this is one way of getting some nutrition into your family's diet without them knowing and also adding it like Dr Gregor Dr Michael Gregor mentions adding it to uh, you know soups and uh, I don't know, whatever you can actually add it to without them actually knowing. So with my family, they're very, very fussy, so I have to be a little bit um, crafty <laughs> trying to get the nutrition into them. I also make Japanese knotweed smoothies, and I've got a video on YouTube of how to make it. It's a really nice smoothie. It's made with melon, oranges, Japanese knotweed water. I use a quarter cup of water um, for this and some frozen mango and if you can't get hold of frozen mango I use frozen pineapple and mango uh, just to sweeten it up a bit and um, my daughter and my partner both drink this so that's good and they don't notice the Japanese not reading there I've got some other videos on Japanese not read tea and other things and I'm really hoping to get in contact with Dr Michael Greger because he helped cure my asthma with a plant-based diet which is really really exciting and with some luck, I'm hoping that he will come over to the UK and uh, let me interview him to do with um, cystic fibrosis um, and wild foods, wild plant medicines like Japanese knotweed and stinging nettle, dandelion, plantain, all the wild herbs that grow in your back garden. In this book, Invasive Plant Medicine by Timothy Scott, you'll see he also mentions Stephen Buna, who I believe first found out that Japanese not really treated Lyme disease. But inside this book it actually mentions that Japanese not really just got four patents. Scientific studies. Japanese not read contains resveratrol, the French paradox. Not read is worthy of at least four patents, it's treated disease, the entire herb contains many wonder drugs including transversveritrol. New Scientist magazine reader bucks the trend. Basically, Ruth Burroughs um, is telling us that Japanese knotweed is not all that bad as we're told. Um, and she's concerned about it. And she's just writing here about all the good things about Japanese knotweed. So, you know, why is it that Science needs to be speaking out more and getting into the papers, but it's not getting to the papers because the papers don't want to hear this. The papers are making too much money out of destroying this plant. So that's all from me, Sharon J. Bainbridge. Please share any videos, you know, blogs on health and nutrition, um, you know, anything you can think of that you know, would be of interest to me. I'd love to hear from you guys. Leave a comment below, subscribe, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.